When you read the monologues that he wrote, he calls himself Maria Edgar. His real name was George Edgar Marriott. And that's um, because it would, might have been confused with uh, Edgar Wallace, who was some sort of relation. Uh, that is why he isn't, he didn't use that name. But to the members of the co-optimists, he was known as George. And I think he was a bit of a historian as well. I'll tell of Canute, King of England, a native of Denmark, where he, his hobbies, was roving and raiding and paddling his feet in the sea. <laughs> By trade he was what's known as a Viking. Each summer he'd visit these shores, help himself to whatever he wanted and come back <coughs> in the autumn for more. These trips always showed he may profit. What stumped him to know was this here, where the English folk got all the money he came and took off of me each year. So after duly considering the matter, he reckoned as how his best course was to plan an invasion of England to tap the supply at its source. He got all the Vikings to join him with a promise of plunder and spoil and raked up atrocity stories to bring all their blood to the boil. They landed one morning at Weymouth and waited for a fight to begin when their foe, Ethelred the Unready, found his army and got them fell in. When battle were done, Crown of England changed hands, so the history books state, from Ethelred's seven and a quarter to King Canute's six and five eights. <laughs> the Vikings were sheared as a witness. Ethelred went somewhere and died, and Canute, to his lasting atonement, made the widow Queen Emma his bride. He started to, she started to teach him his manners, to drink without wetting his nose, put his hand to his mouth and say, pardon, every time the occasion arose. She said his companions were bolder, his manner more easy than free, made him promise no more to disgrace her huh, by paddling his feet in the sea. At the time they say promise meant nothing, it was made in the cool of the spring. But when summer came in with a heat wave, it was a totally different thing. He took his court down to the seaside where they took off their shoes and their socks and they rushed to the sea and they left him alone on his throne on the rocks. <laughs> Said what? <coughs> Come on, King, have a paddle, I'll look after this actoring crown. Canute said, Nay, I promised the missus, and I can't let the old lady down. <laughs> No need to do that, said the tempter, the tide's coming in, as you see. You promised you wouldn't go to it, but you can't stop it coming to me. <laughs> and that's how it happened that later, when Emma came over the sand, she saw Canute knee-deep in water, trying to shush the sea back with his hands. <laughs> For not letting on that he'd seen her, he was chiding each wave as it came, saying, Thus far, my lad, and no further. Till Emma said, What is this game? Said he, These here flatterers told me 
the sea would obey me. And so I'm giving them this demonstration to show what a fat lot they know. I'm doing quite right, Simon, shouted Emma. It's time someone made them look small. Then she took off her shoes and her stockings and started to paddle and all. Thank <laughs> you.